Hi guys, by the time you see this video, the year will have been over. Since 2011 was the 50th anniversary of Six Legs Over Texas, I thought I would commemorate the occasion with a year-long road trip. Six Flags Over Texas, located in Arlington, first opened in 1961. It is the original Six Flags amusement park, the first, and in my opinion, the best. Our road trips this year began with a visit to the park in March, during spring break. My season pass again this year cost around $105 and included my usual options such as season parking. New this year, I was able to purchase my season pass with a three-month payment plan. This meant that after the March trip, my pass had paid for itself, even before I had finished paying off the actual price. I entered the park with a few expectations. To my surprise, there were minimal indicators that the park was celebrating an anniversary. The history photos in the remnants of the old France section were unchanged, but marked as 50 years old. And a special 50th anniversary souvenir sports bottle with season-long free refills was available. But aside from a few other souvenirs, there were no further indicators of the park's big anniversary. Effectively, the park felt like business as usual. Several rides and attractions were not yet available. Most notably, the shockwave was closed with a section of the track removed for maintenance, and the newly rebuilt Texas Giant wouldn't launch until the 22nd of April. Spring break, for all of the flashy and exciting promotions in previous years, was actually a fairly quiet time to visit the park. The weather of spring was usually nice, and the crowds were limited in size. For people that dread the heat or the swollen summer population, spring break is an excellent alternative. I returned to Six Flags in June during my Acon 22 road trip. My second visit to the park was almost as uneventful as had been spring break. With the first weekend of June, temperatures had warmed to summer levels. Even so, the park was enjoyable. By then, all of the park's rides and attractions had opened. The usual summertime shows were in full swing, including Country is My Rock and Roll. Admittedly though, I never saw any of those programs. With regard to the 50th anniversary, I found the usual displays in the France section. However, there were other photo displays dotted throughout the park. These displays featured many of the long-closed or changed rides and attractions of years gone by. Each was located near the original location of the featured ride. Visiting the photos proved interesting as I was old enough to vaguely remember some of the rides. Six Flags offers a great deal of nostalgia and a number of historical firsts, but in the end, all that really mattered is that I had a good time. It was 50 years ago today, August 1st, 1961, that Six Flags Over Texas first opened its gates. It was what they called a soft test opening. The grand opening didn't take place until August 5th. I'll try to be back here on Friday if I can find a break between the uh, QuakeCon activities.
thanks to QuakeCon 2011, I was fully able to visit the park during the entire week of the actual 50th anniversary. By that point in the year, summer's heat had grown uncomfortable. Temperature struck as much as 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and given the humidity in the Metroplex, I spent most afternoons in my hotel. Even so, focusing my visits in the early mornings and later evenings allowed for tolerable experiences. The August visit was during the final days of the 50 Days of Celebration event. Simply put, that few days represented the most festive celebration of the park's big anniversary. One day in particular, I received a free ticket to the park as I entered the main turnstile, and other swag was given away near the Silver Star Carousel stage during trivia activities. Casa Magnetica has been closed for several years, and it was fun to revisit one of only two remaining Crooked House attractions of that kind in North America. Of course, I'm not including any footage of Casa Magnetica. It's one that you have to see for yourself. Each night concluded with a new musical performance featuring the Looney Tunes characters, the cast of Six Flags stage shows, and the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders for good measure. So ended the park's 50th anniversary celebration. Aside from a few weekends in September, the regular season is pretty much over, but the year isn't through yet. Fright Fest in 2011 was exactly the same event it has been for the past few years. Mr. Six and the Looney Tunes characters might or might not have performed in Halloween costumes during their dance party, and the carousel stage was decorated for the nightly WBAT program. 400 house attractions were available, and again run by volunteer groups as fundraisers. From the pirate-themed skullduggery to clowns and lab experiments, these haunted houses only opened later in the evening. Halloween decorations littered the park, and the return of Rania's Nightmare and Howl helped round out the stage shows. Frightfest was once again a great time to visit the park with cooler temperatures and smaller crowds during the day. That trip was a lot of fun, but the 50th anniversary celebration had all but disappeared. Only the photo displays and a few souvenirs remained. Even Casa Magnetica was once again closed. I deliberately waited until New Year's Eve to make the final visit to Six Flags in this anniversary year. For me it was a simple matter of finances and my job scheduling. However, I must admit that given the previous year's celebration at midnight on New Year's Eve, I had hoped to finish this video with a bang. Sadly this was not to be. The park hours were shortened this year, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Nevertheless, the park was beautifully adorned in Christmas lights and other decorations. During the early portions of December, up to the 23rd, Santa could be visited in Santa Land. Guests could also have pictures taken with reindeer performers and watch the lighting of the Tree of Trees each night at 6.30 p.m. Evenings aboard the train would even find the usual monologue replaced with live Christmas carols. However, after the 23rd, all of these attractions were concluded. Additionally, most water rides, three roller coasters, and two other rides were closed for the duration. This was forgivable due to colder temperatures and the fact that dozens of other rides and attractions were still available. The Tree of Trees light show was country music themed this year, which didn't suit my tastes. However, the light show at the back porch stage was excellent and the usual Christmas programs, Deck the Halls, Honky Tonk Christmas, and All I Want for Christmas returned in full. A muddle train display was available near Looney Tunes USA, and all of the usual holiday and carnival themed foods were available in booths around the park. 
Each night concluded with musical Jolly Holiday performance on the carousel stage. The Looney Tunes characters and the stage performers sing and dance a lovely program complete with fake snow. Missing from this visit, from my perspective, were the 50th anniversary celebrations. Aside from the photo displays and few related souvenirs, there was no other sign of the event. Even the new Texas Giant had been closed down during my visit. Overall, this 2011 anniversary season was fun and provided some memories and nostalgia. And given the $10 million cost of the new Texas Giant, I can understand the relatively minor lack of anniversary festivities. The Old Beast was completely stripped and rebuilt in 2010. New trains, the new Iron Horse Steel Hybrid Track, higher heights, a past vertical bank, tunnels, randomized pyrotechnic events. The new Texas Giant went from the most violent ride in the park to the smoothest. Lines were often several hours long and most patrons were happy to wait. In the end, 2011 may have been mostly business as usual, but it was still a great year and I look forward to returning in 2012. said we've come to the end of 2011. From all of us at BWL, Happy New Year.